Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is an Intel Pentium D805. Clocked at 2.66 GHz, it and others in the Pentium D range have always fascinated me. You've seen it being pushed to its limit in games on this channel, and you know how cheap it can be bought. So when I found a whole batch of them for just £5 on sale, or $7, I wanted to do something I've never done before, D-Lid one. So let's get straight into it. I've loosened the lid up here already so it shouldn't be that hard to remove. Now the IHS on these old processors is directly soldered to the CPU die, meaning that pulling the top off will break it. I'm not too concerned about that seeing as these sell for next to no money, but bear that in mind if you're still rocking an old Pentium system and want to try this for yourself. These days, de-lidding modern CPUs is far less risky and is often done by enthusiasts looking to achieve super cool temperatures. Me? Well, I just wanted to see inside this thing. So there it is, the centre of the infamous Pentium D. You'll notice immediately, if you can make them out among the mess, that unlike newer dual cores, the Pentium D features two independent Pentium 4 dies sitting next to each other on the same chip. This is why when people describe the Pentium Ds as two Pentium 4s stuck together, much as I have done in the past, it's pretty much exactly that. What you're left with as a final product is essentially just two separate cores on one chip that share a memory controller. It also explains why they ran so inefficiently. Based on a few articles I found and after conducting my own pre-video research and tests, the Pentium D805 consumed on average 140 watts of power when idle. Under load though, well that saw power consumption figures exceed 200 watts at stock, with some sites recording closer to 300 with their Pentium D805s overclocked. Look up the idle wattage of any modern CPU and you'll discover it doesn't even come close close in terms of thirst. At the time, AMD's equivalent CPUs were cheaper, consumed less power and outperformed even the highest clocked Pentiums. Which brings me to why. Why did Intel produce the Pentium D if they were as bad as I've made them sound? Well, they acted as a stopgap between the Pentium 4s and the hugely successful Core 2 duos that followed. According to an article on Geek.com, Intel themselves admitted that the Pentium D was rushed and was a pressured response to the aforementioned X2 and Opteron series processors from AMD. Personally, I'm glad they were released. I mean, they still sold, and 12 years down the line, I can count on such processors as the basis for my super cheap budget PC building endeavours, although I'd recommend paying the few pence or cents extra to pick up a Core 2 Duo instead. But there we have it guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video because I certainly had fun making it. Um, if you did, be sure to leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy it all that much, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hopefully guys, I'll see you all in the next one.